Hey everyone, today I want to have a look at a feature in version 13 that will have a huge impact on the amount of code you have to write when implementing a relay schema. Before we get started, if you like our content, please hit the subscribe and like button below the video. And with that, let's dive in. So here I have a very simple project. At the moment, there is really nothing to it. We have a data layer here which consists of an asset DB context that exposes assets and asset prices. So essentially the assets are cryptocurrencies and the asset prices are the price information, market cap information for these assets. So what we want to do is put some GraphQL over it and we want to create a GraphQL relay schema. So what I'm first doing is showing you what you had to do with version 12, just so you appreciate the amount of code that is thrown away with version 13. So let's get to it. So at the moment, our program CS is fairly empty. We have a GraphQL server already registered here, but there's no query root type. So this is actually where we would need to start. So in order to get our data or business objects, whatever exposed, we always need a root type and the query root type is mandatory in GraphQL. So we would start here with creating the query type. And let's quickly create a class here, uh, just a clean C-sharp class called query. And the next thing is that we want to expose the assets as a list where we can drill into. So I'm adding here a resolver called get assets. And I already put the paging attribute uh, on there. So we have some paging, but this is not all of it. So if we want to have a good relay schema, we also want to have the capability to fetch by ID. So we probably would have a get assets by ID and a get asset prices by ID. So let's put that in. So we have a get assets by ID, and then we would have a get asset price by ID. So these are things that we need to have to have a nice schema. The next thing is that we want to make it relay compatible and relay has a global object identification spec where we have something that is called the node interface. So all our entities, asset and asset price would implement the node interface and uh, also have a node resolver. So the node interface and the node fields allow us to generically get any entity in our graph by its ID. So let's do that. So we would create another file here then that is called asset node. We don't want to actually bleed GraphQL into our business objects or into our data layer. So we're creating a new class here called asset node. With that created, you can see up here we have an attribute called extend object type and then points to our original asset. So this class will add additional parts to our business object without touching it. So we can now annotate here that this actually should implement the node interface in GraphQL. And we also can introduce here our node resolver. So we say get asset by ID. And that's the first thing where we need to think about something. So this is the, while this is static here and has this attribute marking it as a node resolver, it looks strikingly similar to our query thing here. And that's one of the pain points we have with 12, this duplicate logic here or this boilerplate logic. I mean, we can put uh, in a helper here that wraps this away, but it's really just one line of code. So the pain is about writing this at all. Okay, but we are not done yet. So in order to get that working with 12, we would need to introduce a asset price node. And then also let me put the class in here, asset price node. And you can see we already have the node attribute here. And then we would put the get asset price by ID node resolver in as well. So now we have already quite a lot of code for just two entities, but we are not done yet. We need to register all this stuff. So we need to go here say add query. 
and then we register our query that's fine but we also need to register our type extensions so we say asset node and uh, asset price node and then we have to declare that we actually implement the global object identification specification here. And also we register our DB context, which uh, tells our execution engine that we are actually using a DB context and that DB context is pooled. And then Hot Chocolate will generate all the middlewares around it that rent it from the pool and return it and whatnot. But also really this get assets resolver, that's put a projection middleware on so we can drill into the objects into assets here okay and that means we also have to add projection here with that we are done our graphql server should work we can now say don't know watch because we want if we want to refactor that after we verified that it works but actually there's one more thing i forgot that's quickly have a look at query here and you can see these IDs and in a relay schema we always have these encoded IDs so we want to have here mark these as an ID so we also have to add a couple of attributes to all the arguments that we have concerning this guy here and actually if we want to do it really right then we would also name these IDs we could wrap that but uh, I'm not doing that here. I'm just going along with the most ugly example. Okay, let me put in the last one here. That's an asset price ID. Okay, our schema should be ready. Let's head over to Banana Cake Pop. Refresh that. And uh, as I expected, it works. And we also can run this. So I can ask for the assets. And you can see it's drilling in here into the price. And I also get these IDs here and that are my encoded IDs and also when I want to fetch an asset by its ID I can pass in this encoded ID and it will fetch me that asset but it won't work now because we have these named IDs if I pass in a asset price ID it would tell me that this is actually not an asset ID this is nice uh, and would also work now with the get nodes field. So this is also now there. We can see that in the schema reference. If we have a look at the column view here and look at the query type, you can see that we have our node fields here. So we have our generic method to fetch any object just with its ID. Okay, now let's have a look how we could do that with version 13. So I'm going back into VS Code here. Let me just bring in the files again and let's reflect a bit on what we actually need. So in version 13, we now allow to put the node resolver attribute on fields or on resolvers in your query type. And what this does is now telling the schema engine that this guy here is actually resolving a node. And what this also means is that the thing that this resolver returns is a node and that means that we no longer need this guy here and it also means that this guy here resolves an asset and that means we can get rid of this guy here and actually we can throw this away the whole asset node because we already know now that this field can do what the node resolver did in this extension file and we can go with this also to our other entity here and put also a node resolver on that and then we can throw also this guy out it also now can infer that actually if that is a node resolver then this id here is a node id and it's a node id for asset so we can just rip this attribute out as well and now this query type here is the only graphql specific thing in our project meaning we kicked all the other type type extensions out we don't need them anymore because we can infer now everything from our resolver scene so we can now go to our program cs kick these guys out also our configuration code is now much slimmer so and now we can head over to banana cake pop 
and try out our schema. So we can refresh. There is no new schema. So we don't get a new schema batch here because nothing changed. It's the same as with all this boilerplate code. We still can go to our query type, see our node types here, and everything is fine. And we still can fetch here. You can see it fetches. And we also can fetch from our nodes field down here. You can see I have two IDs passing in into this nodes field. And I have here two inline fragments that if this ID, for instance, is the asset, then it will show us the name. And uh, if an ID represents a asset price, then it will show us the price. Let's run that. And you can see Bitcoin, and that is the uh, asset entity. And the other thing is our price entity. We also could put in here the Dunder type name to make sure of which type our response is, and then execute that again, and you see nicely resolved here. And with this, we are already at the end. I hope you liked this little exploration of version 13. We're focusing on a lot of productivity features in version 13 that make it much simpler to implement complex features. Please help us grow our project by giving us a GitHub star. And if you like our content, please hit the like and subscribe button. And with this, I'm out.